it's, uh, it's a pleasure to be here uh, from Ireland, uh, representing this European platform that I work with as a consultant throughout Europe. Uh, the, the, the speakers before uh, fit very nicely into my area of, of discussion because you talk about the, the system and how you manage and measure and capture the information about how the service is being delivered. Whereas we within EQUOS look to the service providers, look to have a system that is there that reflects the services, number one, but that the services are driven purely and solely by the needs, wishes, and aspirations of the client. Uh, and that's, that's where we work on. The presentation I'm going to do is, is to show you a little, a quick overview of EQUOS, but we were given the reference as well that it was how EQUOS actually reflects on the, on the Convention on the Rights of People with Disabilities and how that is integrated into our system. Our system was created in 2000 uh, and it was launched live in, in, into service provision in 2003 throughout Europe. And we look at, we look at, at the social services sector in, in its full spectrum, from childcare services to care for the elderly, and care for people with disabilities and marginalised groups and the homeless sector. Uh, and, and EQUOS as a such is, is reflecting uh, in the social services sector. And our mission, really, in a sense, is to engage with service providers in relation to quality of service and guaranteeing or assuring the service users of the quality that they will receive when they come to a service that has a system in place. It's a European framework, uh, and I won't go through each of the, of the areas, but it, has, it is in conformance with the, uh, the, the sorts of services of general interest of, of the European Union. Uh, it, it's in relation to the quality framework within the European Union, and also in relation to vocational education and training. Sorry. And the framework, in a sense, is based on that a service provider has three key areas that they need to work on and focus on. It's based around the user, the client, who have rights in relation to what they will achieve or will receive when they come. And part of that rights is because they are empowered to participate actively in the service, that they're not a recipient, they are a participant, that the service is about them and it is for them that there are key stakeholders in relation to the service, and that can be built around how the organization itself is functioning as a, as a provider, but also that it's built based on partnership, because every, every organization in every country in the social sector struggles constantly with resources. And the one way of assuring a person-centered service meeting needs are sometimes where you build partnerships outside of the organization and through that networking that you create a true person-centered service. And the key people within an organization are the staff. Because if you do not have competent staff to deliver a service, then the quality of the service is impacted purely by the competencies and the level of the uh, uh, qualifications uh, of, of the staff. These are the 10 principles around which EQUOS is built. It, 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 as I say, it was created in 2000 and it was launched in 2003. And we started when we created these 10 principles, we started from the center where we said it is about the client or the service user or the trainee or the learner or the whatever definition you have within your service. But that they came to a service and that they had specific rights which are defined by the organization that the organization is not lip service, it's not nice words on a wall in a, in a, in a plaque, it's something that's meaningful to say, you have a right to this and we will deliver on this. It's based on the staff having an ethical approach to how the rights will be delivered, that they are professional staff, but they are ethical in their way of dealing with the issues that are put with them. It's person-centered because the service should be built around the needs and wishes and aspirations of the client. It's comprehensive in the context of its holistic approach, but with the re realization that you can only deliver so much within the resources you have, and that automatically requires a building of a network of partnerships to create and to deliver on the holistic uh, way of, of, of doing. And that is fundamental in a person-centered way, is that the clients participate that the clients actively participate, that the professionals are not the professionals, that the, the staff and the clients work together as a team. Because it's a quality management system, there are, there are aspects of it then. The, the two at the far side is that there is leadership from the organization. 
but at an organization level, but at a staff level, because each staff person who interacts with a client is a leader in their own way, because that's how, how they will learn and how they will grow and how they will uh, live their life. And the, these staff have to be competent and trained, and that there should be ongoing training and development of staff. The, like our colleagues mentioned earlier on, where their focus was on the results, that we should have some measures on these areas to be able to capture how well we're doing, what we plan to do, what we're trying to address, and how well we're achieving. So the, the, the realization of measuring is based on this is what we, we want to do, this is what the clients wish that they want to do, this is what we measure. But we measure not for the sake of measuring, but we measure things that were important to measure to help us improve or to see the growth and the development and the improvement of the lives uh, of the client. And quality of life is one of those fundamental aspects of that. And the rationale as well from a management perspective is if we measure, then we look at what we've measured and we use the information to continuously improve the system. It's based on 10 principles, as I've shown you, and it's then built around those principles. There, is a, 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 there are 50 criteria, and there are 100 performance indicators. It's not prescriptive. The, 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 the requirements are quite general, but are, are orientated towards the social services sector. So it's, it, but it's not, it's, it is not a totally prescriptive system. When we developed it, there were key things we did. We, we looked to the key stakeholders, like the uh, ILO, uh, the uh, World Health Organization. We looked to EDF, the European Disability Forum. We looked to key stakeholders in relation to service provision. And they actually approved the 10 principles and the content of those. So it, the credibility and the verification of it came, came through that. As I said, it's not prescriptive. It's non-prescriptive, sorry. There, there are requirements, but it's non-prescriptive. It's based on the organization doing a self-evaluation. And it's not about one person within the organization, but it's a, a, we, we, the expectation is that there's a cross-section from management to frontline staff, from support staff to uh, key professionals, reflecting on their organization against the principles and the criteria. And it's an interesting experience because the perception of the director and the perception of the frontline person who's supporting the staff can be sometimes very, very different. Uh, it's, it meets some European requirements, as I've talked earlier on. The way the, the, the organization will uh, be accredited to equals will be there'll be an external verification. So there's an external review, and it, it's measurable in the context of do you meet the requirements, the principles, the criteria. Um, just briefly on this one, I mean, EQUAS fits in. It, some organizations talk about we have business management systems like EFQM, or we have process or, or, or systems that are driven by the service like ISO, whereas we would feel that EQUAS, because it, it fits within the, the spectrum in the context of social services, it meets specific requirements and it sits in there. It doesn't necessarily mean if you have this, that you're duplicating, or it doesn't mean if you have EFQM or business management that you're duplicating, but it, si it sits in there in the middle. As I said, the, the process is about self-evaluation. So you're asking staff within the organization, a cross-section of staff, to reflect on it. And it's incredible how, how, how that throws up, because what it does, uh, the, the spider web that, that we've seen earlier on is something like this as well, but what you would have is get an overview from different parts of the organization and then you're looking at, well, does the director think, but does the director inform everyone else? A, a, a typical example would be, uh, we have an ethical approach because the director is a, is a psychiatrist or a psychologist. We have our own code of ethics. But the frontline staff who's dealing with the clients, how do they, how do they actually know the ethical approach? So EQUAS has a principle of ethics, so it requires the organization to define what does ethics mean to each of the staff in a meaningful way to, to, to make an impact on the client. I, I'm moving a little towards rights because rights is one of our principles and has been from back in 2000. And basically we are saying that everybody has a right. Everybody has a right. And I looked at the, the, the CRPD against EQUAS and these are just some of the core elements of CRPD uh, and then I kind of linked in some of the very fundamental aspects of EQUAS and where there is this cross-reference and correlation. 
I, I'm going to flick through some of, uh, of these. Uh, these are the principles. This, this is a paragraph of text which defines. And it's really the organisation being leaders within the sector. And we heard this morning about creating a more inclusive society, about challenging low expectations. This is what we would ask an organisation. So you say you do this. Show me. Tell me how you do it. And let me value how good you are at doing it. And it, it's not prescriptive to say, you need to do this and this and this. It says, OK, so you challenge low expectations. Tell me. Let's see. Um, the, these are, this is one I like because he's Irish as well, and uh, he had a good saying. But, but it's about leadership. This is about leadership. It's not about saying why. It's about saying why not. And this is very much a, a core thing that we should have as, as a value within the sector. Because uh, all the clients need is support. And for us as professionals to say, yeah, why not? Why not? Be the person that you want to be. Why not? Uh, th this is our principle of rights. And again, it's promoting, protecting the rights. It's about equal participation in society, but in the service as well. The service is not for the staff or for the management. The service is for the clients, and it should be driven by that. The, these are some of the criteria and some of the indicators where we would look to know what they have. in relation. Do they have a charter of rights? Is it disseminated in an accessible way for the people who are, have intellectual issues as against those who are physically disabled but do not have intellectual issues? It has to be for both if that's what your client base is. I'll just move quickly along, but I'm conscious of time. I, I think this was 1948, this was defined, and we're still struggling. It seems so wrong that that's still what we, we work on and what we think about and what we have to, have to work on. The ethical approach, and this I just quickly threw two or three more principles, but the ethics, do you have a code of ethics and does it support the clients? Does it promote social justice? And it's about the leadership having this vision and having it in a meaningful way that makes an impact on the lives of the clients, both inside the service and outside in the community. And that's what, that's what the inclusion is about. It's about building these partnerships because we do not have the resources, we do not have all the expertise, but they should be out there and we are the people who should network out there to provide that link and that support. This, this is very much about rights, but it's a participation in a meaningful way. How do we support the clients to, to, to participate or how do we provide advocates to help them articulate their wishes and needs and wants and expectations. It's about involvement. It really is about involvement. Person-centered, I mean, we talked a little bit about it through some of the things, but we, we, within equals, we talk about personal goals and service goals because there is an expectation as well. In reality, a funder is being funded by a national authority or a, a funding agency, and they have goals and expectations. But sometimes the organization talks about the goals and expectations in relation to numbers, capacity, utilization, and money. We're not banks. We're not institutions that are running service. We are about clients. And when you talk about clients, or, 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 or my colleagues earlier on, quality of life. Rarely will an organization say, well, I'll put up my quality of life measures for you. I'll put out the outcomes that the clients have achieved. We'll talk about the utilization, the, the, the funding allocation, and so on. The comprehensive is the holistic approach and the result orientation we should measure. We have to measure. What I, what I worry about at times when I do this work uh, throughout Europe with, with, with some organizations, they get so fixated. They have fixations about results and data. Only data that you can use that makes an impact that will help the service to grow and help, help the service to be better. It's not data for data's sake. I was with an organization quite recently. They had 700 indicators of how good they were doing. <laughs> they had a fantastic database. <laughs> Nobody looked at it. There was one lady putting in the data all day for a week, every day, one day a week, every day, or every week. And no one was looking at the data. Because when it came to the, ma when it came to the director and said, talk to, me, talk to me about your service goals and your service results, he produced financial report, which they were doing weekly and monthly. He produced also. It's, it's, it's not what social services and what our sector is about. This is where Equus has, and this is the last slide in a sense, Th this is what Equus has done since 2003 when we launched. We have now, we have now in, in working in organizations throughout 
12 European countries, there's 900 organisations. We have actually supported the, the, the Charter of Rights for clients. For, uh, that was in 2014. It's about 150,000 clients now who have a Charter of Rights. There's still work to be done in that area because there are many clients who, who have difficulty with knowledge and understanding and ability, but it does make an impact that services, instead of, of me standing here as a service provider and saying, I, we have this in our organization, we have this, and somebody says, can I go and see? My next reaction would probably would be, it's not good for the next few months. C c give me a call in a few months' time, because it's not meaningful in, in the service. These organizations have, have, have done something in relation to rights, in relation to ethics, in relation to person-centered service, and in relation to client participation. Meaningful uh, impacts. Done. Thank you very much.